So thank you everyone for joining us tonight for the Bocce pre-competition webinar for Summer Games, which is happening uh, this weekend. Um, tonight on the call would be myself, the staff liaison for Bocce. Uh, Kendall, who's not with us, is the venue director. Um, many of you know her. She's been extremely helpful in past years. She used to be in my position currently, uh, knows the sport very well, um, and is a big reason of why um, this weekend is going to go as well as it is. Uh, Zach Sintron, uh, on staff here, also is joining us tonight to help out and go through the COVID protocol information along with some general SO, um, MD summer games uh, information that will be helpful. So we will go ahead and get started here. If you have any questions, um, please place them in the chat and we'll try to get to them as soon as um, Zach or I see them. If for some reason we do miss it, uh, raise your hand or feel free to unmute if we're at a pause. Um, but otherwise, before we get off this call, your questions will be addressed. If for some reason we don't know them, I guarantee you I will follow up the uh, next 24 hours and get you that answer for summer games. So here we have the agenda. Um, I'm going to pass it over uh, to Zach here shortly. Uh, we'll go over the maps of Towson University, kind of so you know your way around if you do not currently. We'll talk about the schedules, uh, both for specifically bocce, um, along with kind of the general summer game schedule. Uh, we'll go through awards and staging and how that process will be run along with their locations. And then we'll talk about some reminders of the sport, um, along with some general updates. Um, and there will be a question and answer portion at the end. So with that being said, I will pass it over to Zach um, to discuss some things that are new and then jump into the protocol. Hi, folks. Um, so again, we're not going to go through all these, just some new things that have popped up uh, for 2022 when it comes to summer games. Softball competition is at Juanis Wallace Park now instead of Cockeysville. Um, again, everything will be in the West Village when it comes to housing and breakfast and dinner for delegations that are staying overnight. Um, we will have healthy athletes back on site. So again, if you have a chance to visit that with your team, great opportunity. And it's also very close to Bocce. Um, so you will probably have one of the best opportunities to get there. Um, and we'll also talk some COVID protocol stuff. We have had a minor update. Um, with COVID protocol stuff, we have had a lot of conversations with our athlete leadership council. So we wanted direct feedback from athletes, area leadership, uh, coaches, SOMB staff, uh, our task force for return to play that has been in place since COVID started, um, and legal counsel. And so at this time, Special Olympics Maryland COVID-19 protocol will follow the protocol and restrictions of local and state jurisdictions, include, including the host venues. So what does that mean? What that means is we appreciate all the work that SOI has put in. Uh, SOI put together a very good international protocol. Um, again, when Special Olympics International was putting that together, they needed to not only think about state programs, not only the United States as a country program-wise, but the whole world. Uh, they were making protocols for the whole world and so at this point, we are moving to a more localized protocol uh, that will meet the needs of our athletes and our programs uh, on a more local level because things here in Maryland vary compared to what's in a different state as compared to what's in a different country. Um, so again, uh, we will be working off of the most restrictive protocol when it comes to state uh, COVID-19 restrictions, local restrictions, or the host venue which in this event's case is Towson University. At this time, vaccination protocol and requirements have not changed for our protocol. One thing that we really wanna to stress to everyone, this is not about making events and running events and holding events easier. Of course we wanna hold more events. Of course we wanna get more athletes at events. Of course we wanna do more things, right? Nobody wants to be you know, not able to do the things that we want to do on a given year. But the rationale for this is that we want to operate in a more localized setting that makes sense for, for providing a safe experience for athletes, coaches, volunteers, everybody that's part of our programs that's more close to home in a Maryland setting. Um, again, by following state, local, or venue restrictions, it provides a safe experience that is most consistent for our athletes, coaches, volunteers of what they're living on a day-to-day -day basis in that area. 
things that have not changed. Vaccination protocol remains the same based on sport and overnight stays. Re-entry after a positive COVID test or symptoms remains the same. And re-entry after possible exposure for COVID-19 remains the same. This slide talks about uh, the definition of fully vaccinated. That has not changed as well, either two weeks after second dose of Moderna or Pfizer, or two weeks after your single dose of Johnson & Johnson is what we consider fully vaccinated. Um, at this time, that does not include boosters. Um, boosters are not something that we are tracking. We are tracking full vaccination by the baseline standard of what full vaccination is defined as. Um, one thing that we are continuing to stress is that full vaccination is still required for overnight stays. Um, Towson University, summer games, very notorious with overnight stay because uh, it's a multi-day event. We're reminding you that that is still in place. Here is the slides when it comes to uh, vaccine requirements for sports. Again, bocce, not required, nothing has changed, good to go. The next two slides talk about um, re-entry after exposure when it comes to COVID-19. This slide talks about re-entry after exposure or developing symptoms if you have a vaccination. Again, uh, what we talked about with the two shots for uh, Moderna and Pfizer plus the two-week um, grace period, and then the one shot for Johnson & Johnson, that's what this talks about. The next slide talks about if you do not have a vaccination, which then puts you in um, some additional steps. Uh, again, we want to protect our athletes. We want to protect our coaches. We want to protect our volunteers. We want to protect everybody in our programs to make sure everyone's staying healthy. Um, so again, it does not hurt to take these slides and one, review them for yourself when we send out the slides again. Two, doesn't hurt to potentially clip and print these slides to have on you in general, just to remember what the pro protocol and process is. And three, you are more than welcome to share this out with parents and um, spectators and families that may be coming to our events. Um, we did have a good amount of people on the family and athlete webinar last night um, that attended that saw these as well, but it doesn't hurt to share this with your team's families that may be coming. Before we hit this, questions on protocol. I'm not seeing anything pop up. If you have questions after this, feel free to email myself or Mike Sarnowski. We're more than happy to answer that. Um, if you have questions on sports-specific stuff, again, when it comes to bocce, email Ryan. Um, other than that, Ryan, I'm going to kick it back to you for this. All right, Zach, thank you very much for covering those. Um, that's kind of a review of a lot of the information that we already know, along with some new stuff there. So jumping into some bocce stuff here. Um, if you have any athletes with accommodations, please make sure um, that I have them by tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, please send those to me over email. Just we have those in writing. I like to print it out. Um, and kind of keep track of everybody's information that they pass along if it has not been entered by you a few weeks ago in GMS. Um, many of you have already sent yours in and they are noted in there currently. If you've already sent them in, it would not hurt to send me the email again and confirm that it did not get lost in the inbox. That is always helpful. Um, but again, I do believe I have the ones that I'm aware of there. Um, in case you're wondering though, please feel free to double send that, it never hurts. So here in front of you, you see the Towson University layout um, along with kind of Towson in general with how big this goes to. Um, you can see where uh, Burdick Field is. Um, this is more of just a reference in case you don't really want to put it into your GPS uh, and you're kind of familiar with the area, you can follow these roads to get to the location. The next picture here is a little bit clearer uh, in case you're wondering where we will be. So you see Burdick Field um, on this diagram. Um, parking lot uh, number, Zach, do you know what number that is? I can't see. I don't know what the parking lot number is for Burdick Field, uh, but that the, that garage there is the University Union yeah. garage. Yeah, so please park in that garage. You can't get parking any closer with your parking, uh, so it's a great location to be. 
Um, the garage is kind of in the top right corner ish area next to Burdick Field there. Um, that is the location that you can guarantee not to be towed or ticketed. Uh, Towson University is pretty strict uh, with where you can park on their campus um, as they should be. Um, so please um, be confident if you park there, you're perfectly fine and you're right next to the venue. Um, it's a perfect location. And Tina knew is parking garage three. So it is three for everybody that was wondering there. Um, it actually does say it if we would have read that green little box. All righty, next moving on here. It's a map of the campus. Um, in case you're wondering where everything kind of lines up with other venues, um, this is a great place to reference. Uh, what you will notice is that the lot numbers have changed from past years. Um, Towson kind of did a re renovation of their numbers. So they are listed correctly in this diagram. Um, what's also nice is this also shows not just where the competition is, but where the special events will be occurring later in the day, typically at night, uh, along with your dining and locations and everything like that. This will be in your delegation packet to some degree. Um, I believe I will use this exact diagram, uh, but it's a great reference. I would encourage you to have this on hand. Um, but if you do forget so, I will have it with you in your packets. Jumping to the next slide here, we're not gonna go into these days uh, super deep or anything, but this will give you a rough look at what the days will look like. Uh, so Thursdays, you see there, we'll have an HOD meeting um, from 6 to 8 p.m. that night. More information will be coming out over email with that. Uh, Friday, you see the schedule here. Uh, some points of focus here, lunch, 11.30 to 12.30 on Friday. Uh, that's for the cheerleading venue only, though. Uh, block party will be starting at 5 p.m. Uh, we'll go till 7. Merch will be open throughout the night, starting at 5 also. We this will is have Saturdays. A... Sorry. There's Fridays. We're... Yep, we're good. Yes, thank you. Fridays, yep. Yeah. Uh, the coaches meeting. So as we'll see on another slide here coming up, the coaches meeting location, our Towson contact still trying to figure out where that will be. That will be in your email tomorrow afternoon, uh, along with all the slide information. I have a meeting with them tomorrow at 9 a.m., uh, along with the lining of the field there. They're doing a lot of renovations over there, uh, as do most colleges. So they're trying to figure out where would be the best spot to fit roughly 30 of us or so, um, et cetera there. So the next slide. Um, Saturday schedule. Uh, breakfast, both Saturday and Sunday, will be at 6 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. Competition will be starting uh, at 8 a.m. Um, that is the time that we're going with. We will try to start as soon as, or close to 8 as we can. If it bleeds a little bit later, that's fine. Uh, we do expect to be done by 5 p.m. on Saturday, and Sunday we expect to be done roughly around 3.30 to 4-ish. So Sunday will be a slightly shorter day. Um, I'll allow you to look through the rest here. We'll have a family reception to conclude Saturday from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. And the dance, which I'm sure you'll get questions about, uh, so take note, 6 to 9 p.m. Um, the Summer Games theme this year is superheroes, um, so encourage your athletes to dress up. Um, the ones that were on the family webinar last night were thrilled to hear that, and we're already talking about what they were going to wear. I'm sure Zach will also be wearing something nice too. Moving on to Sunday, you see the times here. Breakfast remains the same. Uh, competition, uh, eight to roughly three. That might get a little bit later for bocce um, as we do have a nice group of athletes um, in bocce this year. Uh, there was not a large decline in the numbers of bocce, so very happy to see that. So I'll pass it over to Zach briefly with some just general summer games updates before we get back into Bashi specifics. Um, in the chat really quick, what popped up from yeah. Suzanne Ray, uh, what is an HOD meeting? HOD meeting, uh, HOD stands for head of delegation. Uh, there's one person from each county that has been designated as the head of delegation. Sometimes it's your, your area director. Sometimes it's somebody else appointed by the area director. Um, they're your main support person for the weekend. Uh, they will have a meeting Thursday night that will get you set up and prepared for um, everything. And they will be the person relaying any major information to you, more or less about general uh, summer games information. Ryan, more times than not, will be the person relaying 
um, Bocce specific information to you. So good question on the HOD meeting. Um, when it comes to some uh, general uh, summer game stuff, uh, dinner each night will be at the dining hall at the West Village, specifically in the West Village Commons. Um, I believe 99.9% .9 of people are in the West Village, uh, either in the the apartments or uh, Towson Run. Um, so you will all be in that area. Again, Block Party is located in Lot 7. Same thing for Olympic Park. Um, and that Lot 7, again, is the lot behind CQ Arena. Um, on the other side, by United Stadium. Um, parade staging for opening ceremonies will start at 6.30. Um, please check in with your HOD if you have anybody in the parade. If not, all the rest of the delegations will be uh, seated as parts of the delegation walk in. Um, inclement weather, if there's bad weather for block party and parade staging, we will just move everybody right inside um, to the CQ Center for opening ceremonies and we will expedite that. Um, and again, HODs have been communicating with Mike Sarnowski about uh, opening ceremonies, who is attending, who will be seated, so on and so forth. Transportation, this whole slide talks about various transportation. All you guys really need to know is that there will be shuttles running throughout the day each day for competition that will loop the whole campus essentially. Um, in the morning when people are leaving from the West Village to go to competition, there will be a, uh, a bunch of transports that will loop from the West Village um, to track and field back over to Burdick to um, uh, swimming at Burdick Hall as well. Um, just to let you know, if you have the capability to walk it from the West Village, it's probably quicker to walk over the bridge over Osler Drive than get on the, um, the shuttle. Um, but again, shuttle is available for you. Um, please note that we will also have probably one or two shuttles that will be going to Kiwanis Wallace Park that is off-site softball. Um, we will have them labeled. Um, if you get on the Kiwanis Wallace shuttle, um, you will be going to softball instead of bocce, um, and we will not be able to get you back very quickly. So again, make sure you're checking which shuttle you get on to. Um, we are going to hop over these transportations by date. Um, there are details about transportation and the loops that it will do and talking about going from housing facilities to block party and talk about going to venues, so on and so forth. Uh, when Ryan sends out the slides tomorrow, take a second, go through these. Um, some good details in here, but nothing that is make or break for you to know other than we will have shuttles making the, the whole Towson loop all day long. Um, last note, um, last notes for transportation. Um, we will have um, paratransports um, that are also available. What we do need you to do, if you need a paratransport, somebody in a wheelchair or um, somebody that may need more assistance getting onto a shuttle, go ahead and call this number in advance. Uh, we recommend 20 minutes in advance so that they can be prepared when they pick you guys up to help you out a little bit as well. Um, again, this talks about transportation at the end of opening ceremony. At the end of opening ceremony, the, the shuttles will be ready to pick people up. Be patient. We may have to do two waves, potentially three waves of shuttles. We will get everybody back to housing. Um, but again, be patient, work with each other, communicate, um, and we'll get everybody on a shuttle back after opening ceremony. Um, last thing when it comes to transportation, we like to remind folks there is, um, this used to be a, more of an issue when Bocce was down on the, the old soccer field by United Stadium, uh, but there is a loading dock um, at United Stadium. No one can park in that, not even Special Olympic staff, no one. Um, I don't even think Towson staff parks in that uh, because that's the main place that they get emergency vehicles in. That's where they get all their grounds crew and people in that they need. Um, but we need to keep that clear. That's right across from parking lot six now. Uh, additionally, uh, Ryan mentioned Olympic Park and the Victory Dance Saturday night. Uh, the theme is superheroes. So please remind your athletes that it is superheroes so they can dress up. 
Um, I love seeing the athletes dress up. They always have some great costumes. Um, and unlike uh, what Ryan said, I will probably just be in a polo, unfortunately. Um, I may see if I can pack my cape, uh, but I'll have to dig it out of the closet first. Other than that, uh, Ryan, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Um, and if you're okay with it, I'll hold down the slides and we'll work through it that way. Perfect, Zach. Thank you. Uh, so the main schedule for the bocce here. Friday, uh, we will have a coaches meeting. We talked about that date, uh, not the date, the time, uh, which is going to be from 6 to 6.30. The location is still being determined by Towson staff, um, working through the location for that, as we're talking about. Earlier, they had some renovations. Uh, we might be in a gym, but either way, once this deck goes out, you will be notified of that location. Um, please have any coaches available, specifically at least your head coach, attend that meeting. Um, that's where packets will be handed out, um, and it'll be a lot of the information that you will need for the weekend. Saturday, competition from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We will have singles on Saturday. Um, as a note, people using the ramps will be divisioned among those who do not use the ramps uh, as based off qualifying scores there. The coaches meeting at the venue will immediately follow the competition. Um, and as we've done in the past, that will be at the awards pavilion. Um, I think last year we might have had it or a couple years ago at the control center, we will all be meeting at the awards pavilion at the conclusion of the event on Saturday. Um, Sunday, um, same schedule. We will end a little bit shorter as we talked about earlier, and it will be traditional and unified doubles. Um, there are no four person teams this year. That is something we're looking to implement in the future if interest does arise, um, but that is a schedule. Saturday, singles, and then Sunday, traditional and unified doubles. Um, so Saturday in the morning, we'll have uh, the female singles, and then we'll transition to the males roughly around noonish or so. On Sundays, it'll be a doubles competition. We'll begin with the traditional unified doubles, and then we will go, or traditional doubles, and then go into unified doubles uh, once the traditional uh, teams conclude. The courts will be open by 7 a.m. each morning for warm-ups and practice if desired. Uh, it will be closed to non um, competing athletes and coaches at 7.45 a.m. at the latest um, as we are trying to get started as close to 8 a.m. as possible there. If there is a change in that schedule by 15 minutes or so, even though it's not a lot of time, I know that everybody likes to be up to date with the exact information, um, you will be notified. Uh, the breakfast and dinner schedule is flexible. If there needs to be accommodations for some reason, um, please have the HOD contact um, Matt Otwell who is in charge of food services. I will include his information on the email that will be sent out tomorrow. Um, if for some reason, something within reason needs to be accommodated there. Friday coaches meeting, we talked about that. Um, the importance of that is pretty much just to hand out the materials. Um, it will not be a super long meeting, um, but the content that you receive will be crucial um, to having this weekend goes as smoothly as it will. So here you see the venue map. Um, so we'll start out with number one first, looking at the key here in the bottom left corner of your screen. The awards and the lunch distribution uh, will be happening in that pavilion. Uh, they were doing some reconstruction around that or maybe exactly on that pavilion, but it will all be cleared out for the most part. Um, there is a chance that there is still construction uh, fencing up around that area, especially as you kind of go up towards that second line that I expect will still be there. Um, so just be aware of that, obviously, um, encourage your athletes to stay um, within the walking areas and not venture elsewhere and just be aware uh, that construction may be occurring as we are um, going through our events uh, this weekend. Uh, number two is kind of a shaded area. Uh, we're not expecting rain or anything, but it's a great place to jump in. If you're trying to get some shade, spectators are allowed to go over in that area also. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more here shortly. Um, but it's a great shaded area outside of the garage. There's not a lot of areas you can just jump in uh, if you need a quick little break there from the sun. Uh, number three, I forget what we called it. It was like the farm for tents or something. I forget what it was, but on the, uh, number three here on the left is where all the delegation um, individuals can set up their tents, um, kind of settle in on your spot there as that's where you'll be for the day. Feel free to put tents up there. Um, there is no food or drink at either of these locations, Burdick Field or 
on that little grass uh, slash dirt area to the left side there. But all delegation members are able to congregate there, no issues whatsoever, as long as there's no food and drink. Competition area number four, uh, that big Pentagon-ish looking image. Um, we will have a court layout diagram here on the next slide or so, but that's where competition will be held on the beautiful um, turf field. So here is how the courts will be laid out, assuming tomorrow goes as planned uh, with the lining of the courts. So there will be 20 inflatable courts this year. Uh, it'll be the first year that we're breaking out all uh, 20 that we have. Um, that is how they will be laid out. You will see um, near the fencing, which is gonna be at the bottom of the screen here, that's gonna be the closest to um, the parking garage. So the courts are going out. Um, but if you break the field in half, they will be on the closer side to the parking garage. Um, as we did last year, we did have spectators on the field, which we love to allow them the opportunity to be able to see the competition up close and personal type of deal without really interfering with anything. Uh, we had stanchion put up. Uh, it will be marked clearly where they cannot pass again, um, but they will be allowed to be on the bleachers. Uh, as you see down here, we're gonna get as many as we can um, and spectators are more than welcome to enter through the gate um, and sit in that spectator area as they have done in the past. So with the competition area, it's going to be on Burdick Field, as we talked about, at Towson University's campus. Uh, it's between Burdick Hall and the University Union. Uh, Burdick Hall is the location of the swim competition, which is happening Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Parking is in the parking garage. Uh, there will be limited seating, but again, like I said, those bleachers fit a good amount of people, um, roughly 50, 25 plus um, on those, depending on how many levels there are. Um, but that is where spectators will be allowed, but cannot pass uh, once that line is kind of drawn there for them. Families of spectators will be allowed in the field uh, within the seating area, but please, there were a few that kind of later in the day last year brought tents and chairs onto the field. We cannot have any tents or chairs on the field. Um, Towson allows us to use this beautiful field. Um, in the past, we had to uh, put a bunch of little platforms down for the chairs before we found chairs that we were allowed to have on there. So please, let's be respectful of their requests. Uh, we do not want to damage their field. So if you see any families um, starting to kind of congregate you know, with chairs and uh, tents, please address it before we need to um, do so. So the location for the awards, it will be in the picnic area. It is covered. It should be shaded for the most part, which is great. Um, we typically have award staging behind the pavilion, and then they receive their awards um, under the pavilion there per usual. Uh, this will be the same location that lunch will be distributed. Um, spectator viewing area can be found in the patio of Burdick Hall building. Uh, it's not a great way to view the games, and I would encourage you to stay uh, within the bleacher area that we talked about previously. Um, feel free to bring an umbrella. That's perfectly fine. Try to be respectful of everybody around you, um, unless you have a rival delegation, I guess, and you want to pop it up next to them a little close. I don't, I don't blame you, but please be respectful um, there, but feel free to be shaded. The weather's going to be beautiful, as we're going to talk about here in a little bit, um, but if you would like to have that for shade, there's no issues whatsoever with that. <clears throat> the competition area, the turf field, it's typically 20 degrees warmer than the grass areas. Um, please make sure the athletes stay hydrated during the day um, in the heat and the sun there. Um, and then keep them out of the shade as much as you can. I'm sure they will naturally do that. But if not, just keep an eye on everybody. Make sure that they're being aware of their situation. Um, days can get long and people might get a little delusional about what's going on. So just keep an eye out for your athletes as uh, we will also be doing also to some extent um, with our main focus being on the competition. Um, but obviously just take care of your athletes the best that you can um, and remind them in advance to bring water. We will have water on site. Um, it will not be in coolers. We will have cases of water, um, but please again, have your athletes stay hydrated, stay out of the sun. Um, there's no golf carts on the turf at all, except for the electronic golf carts by the staff. We've never had an issue in the past, but if you see a golf cart, um, please leave it where it is. 
volunteer check-in, it's going to be the location that is kind of, so you, if you go past the flag area, that's where Burdick Field is. Um, but if you're wondering where volunteers are checking in, this will be the location for them. It will also double as location for swimming volunteer check-in um, up there. So here's where we're talking about um, having all the delegations set up. It's del it's, I think it's the tent city or something, Kendall called it. I wish I remember the name. It's bugging me. Um, but that's where you can set up all your tents. Uh, that bleacher will be out of the way. It doesn't look like a super big area, but there is plenty of room for each of the delegations to set up comfortably uh, distanced um, in that area there. You will see that other field on the left. We're not using that field. Um, it's going to be the one that's right through that fence area straight ahead. Again, no food or drinks. I know that Towson will even have an individual staffed to ensure that nothing passes that location. So knowing that, or even if we didn't know that, let's be respectful of their request um, and please keep all food and drink out of there. Here you see the pavilion. It's pretty much to the right of the garage if you're looking at Burdick Field in case it's your first time being there. Again, lunch and awards will be happening in that area. Um, on the picture on the right, the far right side, there's a good amount of gravel area, and that's where staging for awards will be taking place. There's picnic tables um, outside of lunchtime will be removed. So here's where we talked about just a nice area to get some shade. Um, very spacious, plenty of room for anybody who would like to do so. So for the competition, um, as in previous years, there will not be a staging tent. Coaches are responsible for assuring that athletes and partners are to their assigned courts at least 10 minutes prior to the game start time. Um, I would put that at five minutes prior to the start time at the minimum. Uh, we do have five minutes between each game, so it should be enough time for I would encourage you to start walking out there 10 minutes before um, that gives you plenty of time to settle in. Um, talk about any last minute strategy you might have depending on who you're playing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, matches for singles and doubles will have a predetermined time limit of 25 minutes. There is a scoreboard that will be universal for everybody playing. Um, so please reference that in case you're wondering about the time frame. Um, our goal is to have everybody start on time, everybody to end within that similar time also outside of um, games that may extend due to ties. The winning score is determined by once a player getting 12 points. Um, that is both for singles and doubles. It does not change um, and or reaching that 25 minute time frame. Competition wise, uh, all games will start and end using the same clock we talked about five minutes between each games. Uh, there will be a results board at the far right of the fence. It will have all the uh, results on that sheet. Um, and it'll be a great place to reference if you're wondering where everybody's standing um, during the day there. Some competition and rule reminders. Before we get into that, I want to just take a chance. Is there any questions at this time before we proceed? Ryan, I haven't seen anything pop up in the chat. Um, so coaches must think Bocce is absolutely perfect and you're doing a great job. Well, Bocce is the best. Yes, I you know. All right, moving on here. Alternates for doubles and teams. The players may be activated uh, from the alternate status to replace the scratch player if that player, uh, at least three conditions here, was registered. I need to have them in GMS in advance already. Um, I assume that they have all been sent to me. There are some alternates that can be activated. Um, they need to be actively registered, obviously. Uh, and a single athlete partner may serve as an alternate for multiple teams if necessary. Again, that needs to be in place um, in advance. If you want to double check your alternates with me, feel free, uh, but you will have a report coming out next couple of days, which will also show you all of that also. Um, in the event that one player or double squad has scratched, which tends to happen every year for whatever situation, this is a great point that always is questioned. Uh, the double squad may compete but they are only allowed to throw their balls. Um, they cannot throw um, the absent player's ball also. What I will say with that is I have seen teams uh, still win a match only throwing half the balls that their team typically would have uh, for whatever reason. It is still possible. So please, if you're 
player. It's not a team anymore. Um, is down about that situation. I would highly encourage them if I were you to do their best because there's a good chance they could be perfectly fine. As you know, in bocce, there's a lot of times where you have the score or you have the points for that match and then another athlete accidentally messes that up instead of dropping the ball or whatever. So if that situation does arise, uh, please know that that athlete's great to go. They can only throw their balls though. Substitutions will, uh, during a game will not be allowed except due to a medical emergency um, or prior approval from myself um, or specifically, ideally Kendall, if she's around. Uh, competition equipment, bocce balls will be provided on site. We talked about we're using the new courts, also the blow-up courts. Um, they are tournament issue balls. However, the use of lighter balls uh, will be permitted during the games. That's only applicable for the competitors who have historically used these balls, um, and they are in extreme cases. Um, with that, I would need to be notified in advance. I believe there is one or two in GMS currently in that situation, the same as what we've had in the past. Um, so I have been notified there. Um, players use, uh, utilizing lighter balls will not be division exclusively and will be competing based solely on their divisioning score. Um, an accommodation for the balls, like we talked about, can be made. I just need to know in advance. Um, but we will be sticking with the regulation, Polina, um, for all games, no matter what. <clears throat> hey, Ryan, really quick. Yes. Uh, we did have a question from Rennie. Can you clarify? Um, can you clarify what you mean that an alternate has comparative score as? Uh, player replaced if the alternate has a score that is not as good as the player replaced can we activate an alternate right that's a great question yes as long as that score is the same or worse i guess for a way to put it they can be activated that's a very good question does that answer it is that clear for everybody now great you can't have somebody with a qualifying score of 425 jump in for somebody who was listed at 850 or something or 426 uh, technically. Great question, Rennie. Uh, awards, they will be presented at the comp uh, completion of each competition division. Um, awards venue will be in the picnic area. Um, this may mean that a player has, uh, has one game. Now that it got dark in here, I can't see as well. This may mean that the players have a one game maximum weight between the completion of their final game and the award uh, they will be receiving. Please just have them be patient. Our team over there is trying to get through as fast as they can with everything while still acknowledging and giving your athletes the respect that they deserve for their accomplishments. Um, but we will get to them as fast as we can in the pavilion. Um, okay. A note at the bottom here, please have your athletes wear their credentials. That just for multiple reasons, allows me to understand who should be on the field and who should not be. And it's also a great example to the coach or the parents or other spectators of, hey, only credentialized individuals can be on this field. Uh, so please make sure your athletes um, wear that. It will not inhibit their play. Um, and it's just great for us to recognize who's who on the field. Ryan, it also helps in awards, too, when we're trying point. to stage people. Yes, Again, yes. Uh, we may know a lot of your athletes, too, but our day of volunteers who are, you know, tremendous day of volunteers that have come out to give up their time to be with our athletes and, and have that experience with your athletes, they don't necessarily know their names. And when they're calling for people, it's easier for them to see. Um, credentials, Suzanne, you will be receiving them when you uh, check in for your uh, coaches meeting. Uh, Tina, you're, you're correct. They don't have to wear their credentials during play. Coaches can grab their credentials during play, uh, but when they're not on the field of play, if they could wear them, that is great for us helping to identify athletes. Um, again, if for some reason an athlete ends up wandering off on their own, it helps us identify athletes. It helps us add awards. Um, but again, you can hold them as a coach during uh, play so they're not swinging around. All right, weather-wise, um, so please check the forecast. Um, if there's anything drastic that happens, you will be notified of it. We have a great uh, forecast app, but it appears that we will not need uh, weather in great detail because 
Friday, it's going to be a high of 91, uh, low of 65 as of a few days ago. A little bit chance of rain while we're setting up. No worries at all. Um, heat's fine. A lot of rain and thunderstorms is not. Uh, but Saturday and Sunday, you see the beautiful weather that's anticipated uh, with zero chance of rain there. Um, could not ask for much better. You never know what you're getting uh, during summer games. It's typically pretty warm. So really excited about the weather there. Uh, sunscreen will not be providing sunscreen. Um, it's obviously, like we talked about earlier, hotter on the turf surface. Um, and even if there is clouds, uh, you can still get sunburned. So please make sure that your athletes are wearing sunscreen. Um, and anytime they can be in the shade, um, let's do that just to keep everybody uh, not drained, both physically and mentally from the heat. Hats are permissible, um, provided they don't include a sponsorship logo or corporate logos. The inclement weather plan, um, if it rains heavily, it, there's a possibility that it would be postponed. If it is drizzling or there is light rain, we will not stop play. Um, we will provide towels at the location for athletes to dry the balls off, um, assuming that does not slow play down to some extent or to a greater extent. Um, that is perfectly fine, as we've done in some qualifiers, as you guys know this year. Uh, if there is lightning, all delegates should report inside of the University Union. Uh, if you would like to go in the parking garage, Towson encouraged us to do that also, um, if it doesn't seem like it's going to be something long term there. Um, we talked about having the use of tents, which is great. If a management or Special Olympics Maryland staff members ask you to take it down for whatever reason, please be respectful of that and take it down. Um, there is probably a reason behind that, but please be respectful um, and please take that tent down at that time. Uniforms and athletics attire. Uh, players not in the proper uniform will be disqualified and not allowed to compete. If you have any question about that, please ask before the game starts or ideally before the day starts, um, as there might be a chance you can change on the spot there before it affects anything or you're disqualified. Um, it is a coach's responsibility to ensure that the players comply with this rule. Long pants or shorts, golf or tennis shorts are the most common ones. They are perfectly fine. Uh, jeans, Running shorts or short shorts, no uh, shorter than five inch seams are not permitted. Um, Suzanne Ray would say, can we keep our tents up overnight on Saturday? I will tell you what Towson told me, which is that they lock everything up um, that night, but be aware that that fence line is a lot shorter than what they lock up at night. Um, so anybody could easily jump over that if they really liked your tent, Suzanne. Um, I don't want to say it will be safe. Um, I will leave that up to your discretion. Um, but it will be locked up. Towson is just neither are we liable for anything that may grow legs overnight. I will say the students are not in class, obviously. There are some people still around Towson there. Um, so that is up to you. Um, additionally on that, Ryan, I think if we have people, if you can bump your tents down to the lowest level at least, that would be good. Um, we don't anticipate any extreme overnight weather for rain or wind or whatever that may be. Um, but for the safety of not only your tents, but for anybody that may be in the vicinity or you know, a, a car in the parking garage, if they blow that far, if you can at least bump it down to the lowest level, that would be great. Um, and additionally, if weather is cause for concern overnight, Ryan will make an ask prior to competition finishing that day and you leaving. Ryan will just tell you, hey, folks, take your tents down, leave them, but take them down, please. Yeah. Uh, collared shirt um, is mandatory. Footwear, athletic shoes that do not manage or harm the turf are fine. Uh, no cleats and spikes. Uh, hats are permissible. Again, just no logos, um, their sponsorship or corporate logos. Players may not use headphones, cell phones, or electronic devices in the competition venue. Um, if they need to have that in the delegation area, um, I am fine with that, but that will not pass uh, once they get onto Burdick Field there. Um, players can, like we talked about earlier, tuck it into their shirts if they would like when they play it, or give it to their coach um, if they're bothered by it um, during their play. The rules of coaching, um, 
only competing athletes and partners and designated volunteers are on the courts. There is no coaching once a game begins. Uh, um, and that is defined as once that clock starts. So up until that point, you do whatever you want. Um, each of you have trained your athletes very well, long and hard over this season um, to get them to the point where they are today. A lot of improvement has been made. Um, so let your athletes do what they've learned. Um, I'm sure some of them make mistakes as anybody who played sports growing up has. Um, and that's how you learn. Uh, there's actually some amazing stories um, that have come out of mistakes um, within Special Olympics and others. Uh, with timeouts, timeouts will be offered, afforded in instances of injury or illness. Um, that should pretty much be the only reason. Um, if there's any delays that are lengthy, which is two minutes or more, uh, Kendall or I or somebody else on the management team will come over and we may add time to that specific court if needed. Um, that is not a common occurrence. It's not gonna affect the day or anything. If it needs to happen, we can have it happen, um, but that will occur there. Something that I'm going to bring up though it's not completely finalized is that we have flags this year that we have noticed in the past. There's been issues with either coaches with how volunteers have uh, measured or there's a discrepancy during the game. Uh, we're still trying to figure out exactly how we'd like to use those, but there will be flags available uh, either given to officials or coaches, our volunteers or coaches, that when there's an issue arising at a court that needs to be addressed before any controversy occurs, that flag can be raised and we know, hey, jump over to court four. We can take care of that issue and it should keep games from being delayed and resolve the action appropriately. Um, if there is an issue, we would like to have it corrected. Uh, we're not trying to play a game that is not done in the way that SOMD rules or the national government body has the rules. Um, so that will be discussed in the coaches meeting also, uh, just to have a random tangent there. Uh, rule measurements, competing athletes and unified partners may request a measurement. Um, volunteers should be and will be encouraged slash asked very nicely to measure anything that is anywhere close to uh, anything in question there. Uh, coaches, family members, and our spectators may not. So as a coach, there is a standing area that you've used in the past, and then your athletes play kind of a few feet up there. Before the game starts, tell them to ask for a measurement, and they can ask for a measurement over and over and over. There is no issue at all. Um, but as a coach, please do not be um, asking for a measurement there. That needs to come from the athlete. Officials will be trained on and asked to practice the proper measuring technique before the game start, um, which is from the foremost point of the bocce ball to the middle of the plena. I'm aware that this is the biggest controversy that happens during bocce from what I've seen. Uh, we will stress it over and over and over. Our officials are going to mention it to the volunteers the first time we see it and try to nip it uh, early in the day there. Uh, we will have multiple different groups of volunteers coming in and out for both days, so please be uh, respectful of them. Um, many of them are trying their best to give our athletes an opportunity to compete um, in the best manner there. Um, but if there is an issue, um, we would like to be aware of it so it can be addressed. Is there any question on measurements before we move on here? Got it. All right. With the spectators, uh, the verdict field is not equipped with uh, bleacher seating. However, we talked about we have that seating for the spectators there. It'll be roughly eight different ones that are laid out. Uh, lawn chairs and tents cannot have um, on the main field. It can be put in that delegation area, as we noted before. Uh, as much as many of us love our pets, there cannot be any dogs at the field level. Protests and appeals. So a protest means that you're standing up for your athlete. It's a great thing. That's no issue whatsoever. There's no hard feelings on our team's end if it happens. Um, they need to be filed at the control center, which will be located at the center of the field uh, within 15 minutes of the completion of the match. That needs to come from the head coach. Uh, that will be on NCR paper, um, which will go through three different pieces of paper uh, just for tracking purposes. So you'll fill it out. It'll go through the three different pages. 
you will take the pink sheet and then we will follow up uh, with an answer on uh, what was decided based on that protest. Uh, if you're not content with that answer or still disagree, that can be appealed also then to the Games Rules Committee. Um, so please come back to the Control Center for that one or Zach, yes, we'll, we'll keep everything there uh, for this. If we need to go that route, please come back and say that you would like to take it to the higher power of the Games Rules Committee and we will have a final answer for you in the next 24 hours following that. Hey Ryan, really quick, good question uh, that was in one of the maps, but I don't think we've spoken about. Yep. Where are the restrooms? So the porta pot location that you will be assisting with the drop tomorrow, Zach, will be located. Oh, you want to go? We'll go back up to the map. We'll go back right. the time. I want people to see it. That's an important part. Uh, we keep it over there. Yep, we're coming back up to. I'm going to find our bocce map. Sorry, folks. It's tucked in the middle here. Zach, I think I have control of it now. So if they're seeing the awards and lunch distribution yep. inside there. But, yep. yep. We're good. All right. So it will be right near the lunch uh, and awards distribution area. It's the same location that we had in 2019. It's pretty much going to be in the bottom right corner of the picture that you're seeing now. There will be two porta pots there. Great question, Mike. I'm sure I'll be using them also. All right, jumping back to where we were here. Here's an example of the protest form. Please, if you're filling it out, fill it out in entirety. Everything is important there uh, for us to be able to make an appropriate decision slash recall exactly what happened. Um, so there is an example. Again, those will be located in the control center. Um, at this point, is a student union open? Um, I can ask Morgan about that. I believe that we can go in there if we need to briefly. Um, I do not want that to be a well-known location for everybody to be jumping in. Yes, it's air conditioned in there, um, but Zach, unless you have heard differently, that's not a place that everybody should be congregating regularly. No, so the union's still open. It's just open in very limited capacities. They, when you guys get there, you'll see that they're pretty much done with that new addition to the union there. Um, and they're working on transitioning a lot of the rooms and buildings and stuff. Um, I like to think that the restrooms potentially in the union are open as well too, but we can't guarantee anything. Um, again, the union's very much under construction. It's open in very limited capacities. Ryan, do you want me to run through some of these general game slides? That would be great. Go ahead. Cool. Um, again, so meals uh, registered delegation members uh, will all get lunch on Saturday and Sunday. Again, if you are a registered delegation, you will have that opportunity. Um, everybody staying on campus will have access to breakfast and dinner at the uh, West Village Commons. So you will have access to that every morning. Um, and again, dinner for delegations will be provided prior to the opening ceremony and block party. It will all be at the West Village Commons. Uh, this year, there is not a current plan to have access to food at the block party um, or at the dance. Um, it's just a, a numbers deal at this point for this year. Um, Please remind parents and spectators that they will not be provided a meal um, and we do not have extra meals planned for purchase um, at the West Village Commons either. Um, I will say if you have uh, access to Google, about a mile off campus, you can find almost anything and anything that you want at Towson. Um, they have a burger fry, they have a Chipotle, they have sit down restaurants. Um, there's actually a really good Mexican restaurant at Towson. Um, so if you want that secret and you see me on campus too, you can ask me where that is. Um, I will be more than happy to let you know. Uh, control Center, which is on the other side, it's at the Minigan Room, it's in United Stadium. Um, more than likely, you guys won't be over there that much, but if you really, really need something uh, from SOMD staff, more than likely uh, people will be in there holding down Control Center in the Minigan Room. Um, Delegation registration will actually be at the West Village Commons. Uh, that happens on Thursday, June 16th. That will be handled mostly by HODs for delegations. So not something that you need. Um, and additionally, 
Uh, Jane Dunn has done our housing again. She's been doing housing for summer games for years now. Um, she always does a spectacular job. Um, she will be looping in all of your heads of delegation on housing as well. So again, if you have any questions about um, housing or registration or any of that stuff, please check in with your HOD for your delegation. Um, your HOD will have your keys. Um, and again, just a reminder about in-housing, three to one ratio, three athletes to one coach. Event guide. Event guide has been distributed. It has been sent out electronically um, to all HODs, coaches, uh, essentially everybody involved in summer games. If for some reason you have not seen that, um, you can also go to our uh, coach resource page. The main coach resource page also has a summer game specific coach resource page. You can find all updates there. Um, we will also do our best to keep the resource pages updated throughout summer games. Uh, within our capacity and our bandwidth, we will try to get updates there as well. Um, as always, we will have medical on-site at every venue before we start any sort of competition. Uh, they will be in red shirts. They will be walking around. So if you need anything, um, grab them. If you can't find them initially, grab Ryan, grab anybody that's in a management team polo, and we will get medical for you as soon as we can get it. Um, additionally, as Ryan mentioned, drink water, lots and lots of water. Um, it gets away from you really quick being out there on the turf. It gets really warm. Um, if there's cloud cover, you might feel good about it. Drink water. Um, bring sunscreen. Uh, bug repellent doesn't hurt. We don't have a lot of bug issues at Burdick Field, but it doesn't hurt. Um, and then Ryan went through weather. Weather looks really, really good for this weekend, folks. Uh, Friday, we're going to get some rain, maybe a little bit of thunderstorms, but that thunderstorm slash rain is going to come through and it's going to make Saturday and Sunday really, really nice for all of you. So again, right now, no issues with weather. If anything comes up, we will communicate that. Other than that, Ryan, we're, we're at our questions point if we want to take questions. Uh, yeah, Tina did send me a message directly, but I think it should be addressed to everybody. I mean, as it, I understand the reasoning for sending it just to me. Uh, but the question was, will medical be doing COVID tests if they need to be done? Uh, medical will not be doing COVID tests. If anybody is feeling sick whatsoever, it doesn't matter what you have. Uh, please uh, stay away from the venue and or go home. Um, there are a lot of personal COVID tests that are available. Uh, feel free to bring those with you. If you would like to do so, um, that would not hurt. If you're experiencing symptoms, uh, feel free to take one of those. If it's something mild, um, I would treat it like any other sickness at this point. Um, but medical will not currently be having COVID tests available uh, at the venues. Uh, Ryan, another question came in. When will we receive match schedules? Yeah, so everything is being completed um, in the next 24 hours or so. That will be sent over email, uh, which should be completed by Thursday afternoon, I'm going to put, which I know is slightly late, um, but that is two days before the competition. You will also be receiving them in your coach's packets. Um, but please plan to be ready for the times that we talked about. Uh, the start times and end times um, are very straightforward there and we will start and pretty much at those exact same times within a half an hour or so with the numbers that we have currently. I'm not seeing any other questions popping up in the chat unless anybody's going to type something in now. Um, Ryan, if anything doesn't come in, do you have any final points that you want to hit? No, I just want to say, Suzanne, also, there's a lot of parents that are interested that might not be able to attend the event and kind of wondering when everything is starting and results. Like Zach kind of uh, mentioned, everything will be posted um, on the coach's resource page to whatever extent we can post event that day. I know that we're updating stuff late at night, just so you all have the most updated information there. So send everybody over to that resource page. Um, if we have access to the information, it is most likely up there also. So please, like you've been doing during the season with qualifiers, check that page out. We try to work hard to keep that accurate and up to date um, there. Um, as you can see, here's just a list in case you need to contact another sports director if you don't have their email already or you're wondering what sports they cover. If you have any bocce or athletics questions, please direct them to me. Um, if it's COVID related, uh, Mike Starnowski, or Zach would be the best contacts there. Jeff obviously does a great job handling that 
uh, content also, if you feel free to reach out to him with that. Do we have any other questions at this time? Uh, I'm not seeing anything in the chat currently. Okay. Um, as I say before each event, please, if you have anything pressing or you think that I need to know, if you think I need to know, I probably do need to know. Um, so please call me with that information. Don't email me at this point. I'm going to be kind of in and out of the office at all weird hours. Uh, my cell phone is the best way to reach me. Many of you have that. If you don't, um, let me know in chat or send me an email if you would like that. It's at the bottom, obviously, my signature there also. That's the best way to contact me. It's easier for me than I'll respond to emails uh, often when you're kind of in and out of everything. Uh, with no questions come in, um, like I said on the webinar earlier, for anybody that was on there, but it is extremely true. Uh, it takes everybody to do this, as we always say, but often in the heat of the moment, you don't recognize that. Uh, when you're going through the season, um, but without each and every one of you, your athletes would not have been trained this year. They would not have the opportunity to compete at summer games without you. Um, and they would not be able to have the experience that they're going to leave with without you here. Um, it's amazing, Special Olympics, how many people are involved in volunteering, and giving their time to better the athletes. Um, and now it's going to be a great weekend for them to show off what they did. So thank you to each and every one of you. Let's have a great summer games. If there's issues that arise, and I'm sure there will, let's deal with them. Uh, professionally. Um, remember that we're representing Special Olympics Maryland. There's going to be people outside of our organization watching the games also, um, as usual. So please, uh, let's represent our organization well. Um, and thank you again for everything. If there's no more questions, uh, this content will be distributed tomorrow, uh, along with other details that I believe may be necessary. And thank you, as always, for everything that you do. With that, we will end the recording, and I hope that everybody has a great night. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.